Welcome to Art Bazaar, a podcast that chats with artists of all types to explore the depths of creativity. Brought to you by the Alternative Gallery. We'll be releasing new episodes every Wednesday with bonus episodes dropping randomly. If you like what you're hearing, you can support this podcast by going to thealternativegallery.com and clicking on the podcast tab. I'm your host, Brandon Wonder, creative director of the Alternative Gallery, a nonprofit arts organization in Allentown, PA, run through the efforts of dedicated volunteers. On this episode of Our Bazaar, we're chatting with Cap Sizza, a hip-hop artist and wordsmith right here from Allentown, Pennsylvania. You can catch Cap on a wide range of projects with other artists as a regular on the Grind Mode Cypher, and he'll also be releasing his new full-length album titled Griffin on April 26th, which is an independent release. To get a taste of what he does, check him out on all your favorite streaming platforms. Cap Sizzle, that's C-A-P-C-I-Z-Z-A. New single, Big Bang Theory, coming out soon. Watch for that. This is going to be a Tribe Called Quest kind of episode, because we're going to be talking beats, rhymes, and life. Love it. What's up, Cap? What's Welcome to Art Bazaar, man. Thank you so much for having me. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. You know, it's so exciting. You're someone that I had to have on this episode because... I don't want to like diss anyone else here, but I think you're my favorite hip hop artist from Allentown. Oh man, man thank you. That means a lot. I've man. been a fan of your work for a long time, <laughs> and you know I, how long has it been since I saw you? Yeah, it's, it's probably been, pre-pandemic. I think probably. Right? I will say like a year and a half, probably. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Say, uh, You've popped up since the pandemic. I popped up yeah, for yeah, a little yeah, bit. Yeah. 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 So, what have you been working on in the last couple of years? I've been Show wise cipher- and stuff like ciphering. Uh, I've been actually in school for hip hop. I've been uh, in Pendulum Inc. Uh, run by Mickey Fax and uh, Chilla Jones, the battle rapper. That's incredible. Um, and they teach you like a lot of different techniques. And I, and I look back on my old work. It, it, it's so much that you get to learn. And you look back at your old work. It's like, man, that that wasn't nothing. <laughs> that's a that's a regular part of growing, man. You know Whether you're a human being or an artist, and it's nice to be able to look back like that because that contrast right. shows you. Not only how you're evolving, but which new directions you might be going in. Right, 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 right. And like, like they teach you metaphors, storytelling. They they teach you how to, uh, you know, do punchlines. There's a thing called mirror morphing. It's a whole. I I got a whole textbook. That's incredible. Of like of uh, of techniques that you could do. Um, Is this something that people can sign up for? Yeah, people can sign up for it. Um, there's an application process. You can submit your MP3 of your what you feel like is your best work yeah. and then they'll put you in courses where your level of skill set is at and then they just improve you from there. It's awesome. And man. then you go do electives within the week. They got wow. uh they got uh, It's like hip hop college. <laughs> Bruh, <laughs> there's nothing like it. Damn. You know what I'm saying? Well, so, we'll definitely have to include the information in the show notes. Right. So curious, a- any MCs, that. Uh, that just, uh, this is a plug, any MCs out there that, that wants to get better, go to Pendulum Inc., Nice, and man. learn and learn the ways and how to master your craft. How long you been doing that for? Uh, I will say this is my second year. So you're dedicated at this I'm point. I'm dedicated, yeah. yeah I'm, de- I'm definitely dedicated. I, I, when you're around like um, my fellow cohort over there, man, when you're surrounded by... That's the thing I love. I, that's why I love doing ciphers and I love doing the school because it's like you're surrounded by other artists that are in different levels and it's like it makes you want to push your pen. It makes you want to be like, listen, like he came up with some crazy stuff. I got to step my game up every homework presentation is like they leave earth (laughs) dude this is one of the great reasons you're touching on here about why artists should hang out with other artists because like you have those like-minded folks that are inspiring you and there's that friendly form of competition oh i love that you know and it's like the fact that you even just drop the phrase battle rap like dude i rarely hear that anymore because music as we know it is hip-hop has changed so much It's, it's gone in so many different directions it's in many ways, become the new pop music, right? Which right. has kind of made what you do almost by essence underground, because yeah. it's it's not a part of that larger scene that most people see. The zeitgeist put it yes. as name because, like, really, when you really look at it, music has all types of feelings and modes and different uh, vibes to it. And art, you can't put you can't put a label on it. You know what I'm saying? So like. Somebody, somebody could be crazy skilled and still do a song like what Drake does. And then when he goes into a cypher, a boom bap beep, and he'll just kill it at the same time. Like, I, I feel like we're at a diverse... Like, there's artists out there that are very diverse. Uh, I think uh, people need to see more of that aspect of hip-hop. You know what I I'm agree, saying? man, yeah. 
you know because like that that pop stuff is easy for people yeah, it's who a are formula. like you know what i'm saying it's easy for an artist to like just like okay all i have to do is say a chorus just say something simple for a chorus like i could make an eight bar 16 bar chorus and that yeah. will pop and then for the verse all i have to do is just go yeah 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 well you mama, know mama, 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 yeah, one, someone yeah. you've cited as a inspiration in the past is eminem right and i would say in my opinion, my least favorite songs of his are always his singles. Right. When I get to an Eminem album and I listen the whole thing through, oh, yeah. like radio songs, those are the ones I like the least. Right, right. And it's some of those songs that are like, you know, sometimes his stuff, it takes a while to really get, man. Oh, yeah. So, the B-side stuff is always the greatest stuff. Especially with him, man. He's yeah. wild. He's the wild B-side stuff is always the greatest. Did you ever you see know? that Tim Westwood freestyle he did? Oh, yeah. Bro. Oh, yeah, he just, like, he, not, without thinking, without hesitation, yeah. he, he just he just leaves Earth and he's doing multiple syllables and thing where see i can get i can get all scientific about it but it's just like sometimes he'll have like eight syllable rhymes and like when you really put it down you go on a piece of paper and you try to match each syllable and try to think how to do that it's like it's, it's a lot tougher than people yeah he's think definitely it is, he's you know definitely somebody that's getting better with age too right. as far as that man you know what I'm saying? Mean, his, his skills are getting and, sharper and that's and sharper. the beauty of it because it's like you know it's not like a sport where it's like if you get older your knees start getting yep. uh, messed up. It's too reliant on your physical body. Right, And right. you know what? This is an important point, too, because right. in America, everyone feels, oh, you're only the real true artist for the first few years of your career. Oh, you've been around for 10 years? Yes. You're a has-been. And no, it's like such no, an American no, approach to no, artists, man. No. And like, okay, yes, most musicians don't get better with age, in the pop scene at least. Yeah. Most filmmakers make their best movies early in their career. Look at someone like Quentin Tarantino. Oh, yeah. I would say his best films were early on, and now they're like, oh, they're still great films, but they don't hold a candle to what he used to do. Right, right. But there's this European sentiment that even if you only ever did one great movie, one great album, you were forever a master at what you do. Right. And here in America, we kind of treat it as you're only as great as... Your yeah. most recent work. And I think a lot of times people don't give older musicians or artists a chance. I mean, look at someone like Rolling Stones. They just put out a new record in November. That record was fucking phenomenal. That could have been released at the height of Rolling Stones in the early 1970s. How old are those guys? They're in their early 80s. What And, and that's, that, that's the problem I have with hip-hop. Because it's like, we don't, we don't allow grace. Cherish ageism. Ageism uh, is a big problem in It's hip-hop. a big problem. And yeah. it's like, bro, like, if you still got a voice, yep. you still could flow, you could still be on beat, mm-hmm. what's what's the problem? Yeah, Big Daddy Kane just dropped that fucking crazy-ass freestyle a few months yeah. ago. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, that yeah. dude hasn't missed a fucking no, step, No, no, I saw a show with him, like, years ago, but he still got it. Yeah. He yeah. still got it. KRS-One still got it. I, I remember when he went to Main Gate and he was freestyling. Oh, I was pissed. I missed that show. Yeah, bro. My cousin was, was there, but I was He not. was freestyling out the crowd and talk about what they're, what they're wearing. It was like, everybody has a drink. They're like, what, what drink they have in their hand? Wow. And that is not easy to do. Yeah. And he's like- Well, he's one of the best for a reason. He's one of the best. Yeah. Or know? even someone like Nas, who's on arguably the best run of his entire career. Right. Which is six albums in three yeah. years. How, how old is he? Fifty or something like that. He's, I, like, he's like, yeah, he's early fifties, man. Early fifties. So, like, yeah, I, I don't believe. But I think so that. many people think that hip hop is a young man's game. If the culture was a person, it would be fifty, right? It'd be fifty yep. years old, yep. right? It'll be we a fifty-year-old man or woman. Twenty twenty-three, yep. Right, a fifty-year-old man or woman versus other uh, other genres. They're like hundreds of years old. I mean, fucking the Godfather of Hip Hop, Cool Herc is still around. He nah, was still he, he was still yeah, throwing yeah. block parties at five points right, until they right. demolished that shit. Right, right. He right. was still doing his thing until right. they took away the spot to do right, his thing. Right. It's crazy how we have to go out of our way to honor our pioneers. We have to go out of our way versus like any other genres where they have a museums dedicated uh, what was it? The Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, right? Yeah. And they got rock and roll artists. They cherish it so much where they got other genres of music being indicted into well you know that there's a hip-hop museum there's a like in now the South it is, Bronx. but it's not it's yeah. nowhere near as like no it's not as prominent as it should be you get what i'm but saying but I, I think i think the lack of appreciation of hip-hop just is intertwined with the united states's lack of appreciation for art in general oh yeah for a lot of people it's just now being considered a more serious form of art it's been around long enough to prove itself yeah right Right, right. Where right. in the place like Europe, they got it early on, man, just like they did with jazz. Yeah, right, right. And right. here we are, guys like you, still fighting for, I don't know, what should have been supported decades ago. Yeah. I, hey, man, I don't get upset about that. Because it, it will drive you crazy as an artist. Literally. I know. It well, will drive you, know, you I, crazy. I think it's important to address the issues because, first of all, some people might not even be aware of it. That's true. 
And I think if we want to change it, we got to at least start a dialogue. It and, definitely. And let that, people oh, know. Oh, yeah. The, I, I, I believe in that as well. Yeah. I believe in that. But I'm just saying for your sanity of like, why, you know, why people are not fucking with me? Why I people know. are not like, doing, like like gravitating towards me? And then they gravitate towards like a sexy red or they gravitate towards, you know, people who like all they talk about is that ass and pussy. And I, all that so stuff. whack, man. And so, then someone like Black Thought is just fucking like, you know, you know if it weren't for her, their, their gig on The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon, I don't even know if The Roots would be a household name at this point. No. Yeah, Still, right. as it's great true. as they are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You remember that Funk Flex freestyle yeah, Black Dog oh, did? Oh, bro, like he went off. <laughs> that That's like, you know, and like Jimmy Fallon's like worshiping at his feet. He brings Black Thought on to uh, the episode to interview him and he prints it out in a scroll. I don't know if you ever saw that. It's like this giant ass scroll of everything he said in that freestyle and Jimmy Fallon's like, holy shit and he's showing the praise that other like hip hop artists are giving him online and he's reading them and then Black Thought goes, yeah, it's just what I had on my mind at the time. Like, so humble yeah, about right, it. Really? Yeah, 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 yeah. Because he knows. Yeah, he knows. He knows. He knows. He knows. He knows what he could do. He knows. He knows what he could do. What kind of music, or maybe even what subgenre of hip hop do you consider what you do? Do you consider it like I, I, old school hip hop? I, I, gra- I, I gravitate. I could do everything. Yeah. You know, I could do drill. I could do trap. I could do mainstream pop. I could do Kid Cudi type sounds. I do boom bap. What I gravitate to that speaks to me a lot more when I when I write uh, is a lot of soulful. I guess as a genre in itself, uh, soulful hip hop. Yeah, like a Knife Wonder, Jay Dilla, Tribe Called Quest, Tribe Called Quest, uh, High Tech, Illa J, Common, uh, Love Common, Common, Lupe Fiasco. Even though he does venture to pop a lot too. Yeah, those are the type of that, that, that's my cloth. Yeah, um, that I come from. You know, because you know, I know you're involved a lot in ciphers and things of that nature, which is kind of no longer very visible in, oh, yeah. in, in, in modern hip hop music. Like, yeah. do you do that because you're trying to keep something alive or is it just something you don't even think about? It's like, this is what I like doing. That's why I do it. Yeah, I don't think about it. I just like I notice myself getting better when I'm doing that, because like, especially in ciphers, you like you don't know what the next person is going to come up with. and It's going to blow people's minds away. So I'm like, okay, this person goes crazy. I better get on my P's and Q's and write the best that I can so I can keep up. That's the thrill of it. Now, for, how for often in these ciphers is it written versus actual freestyle? Do you? It's that, written. A lot, the, a, lot the, the, them, the, yeah. a lot of them are written. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the the way it processes the do the, the grammo ciphers is that you you write your sixteen verse bar verse and you submit it to them. Everybody gets a certain beat gets to certain people, and then we all share a cipher. We all do sixteen one after one after each other, and then you write it. You record it, and then it gets all mixed down, and then we perform it. Um, yeah, for those who aren't aware, why don't you explain what Grind Mode Cypher is and maybe how you got involved? It's a, a cypher organization that goes around the states. They go around town per town, and they, they get a bunch of local MCs or, 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 or reoccurring MCs like myself. And we travel. Yeah, you're and, almost like the all-star team at this yeah, point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a part of the all-star team. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Grimo. <laughs> shout out to Lingo. A-OK. Yeah, you guys do everybody. dope stuff, for real. You know what I'm saying? They're all crazy, talented individuals. And, like, it really is a platform that just expose other artists out there and, you know, present them in the forefront. And then also to show their skill base. And there's also a good connecting opportunity to build. Oh, yeah. Networking like crazy, Networking bro. like crazy, you know Yeah, because you guys, you guys filmed one here a few years back and there must have been like 12, 15 yeah. artists in that yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It yeah, was yeah. packed. Yeah, it was, it was, it's was, it was a lot. To be quite honest, in my album, a lot of the artists that I met in there was from Grind Mode. Wow. Um, How long you been doing it now with the Grind Mode? Oh, say like six, seven years now. Say because you guys shot that before the pandemic here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That was a long, 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 long time. Long the, time. The before times. Mm-hmm. The before times. <laughs> yeah, before the beard. You know what I mean. What, what did you do during the pandemic? By the way, were you were you like recording any music? Yeah, I was recording music. I did a song called "What What What's Happening," and I was talking about you know the the Black Lives Matter movement and all the um, the stuff that you know Trump supporters was acting crazy. So I, I had to speak up about yeah, that. They're still fucked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. And uh, fucking psychopaths, <laughs> yeah. dude. Well, I don't know what reality they're living in, but it's not ours. Yeah, yeah, and and, I, and I'm touching, and I do touch on that subject on on my album as well. Um, Good, but it's, it's really important to speak about social issues, man. So I'm glad to hear that. You know, so I wrote this album three years ago. 
the, uh, the Griffin album the you're about Griffin, to drop. Oh, yeah, yeah, three years ago. Three That's, years yeah, ago. Yeah, three years ago. Did so, you record and write it three years yeah, ago? Yeah, three years ago. Why you been sitting on it so long? I mean, because like I, 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 I was waiting on mixing. Um, I record everything by myself, but when it comes to presenting stuff, especially an album, I don't really mix myself. You so, want to get it polished by yeah, someone. I want to get polished a, by somebody. A, a different ear, right? Yeah. Right, right, right. And then like get, I feel that make it official. Yeah, you know, make it sound official. So like I was waiting on that. I was waiting on covers. I was waiting on that. So it, it was it was a process to get through. In the meantime, I was sharpening my skills. And now when I look back at it, I'm like, it's a good album. I'm not gonna lie. It is a great album. I'm going I'm going to be 100% con- it's a great album. You go get it at April 26th. I'm not going to say anything further. But but because you're, you're looking at it so <laughs> so objectively that you you see how much you've changed in those yes. 3 years. Yes. 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 Yeah. Concept wise is ge- is genius. I put a lot of thought into this project. It's 15 tracks and going from track one to track two to track three i purposely chose beats that are that has a good transition sound to go through and then there's the, the concept is a transition as well and there's there's certain things that i say that references other tracks you get what i'm saying so oh, like yeah. yeah when it comes to the art aspect i'm confident as hell you just answered several questions i was going to ask because i was going to say you know for some people there's so many different approaches to releasing an album some people right. they just all right, I've been recording a bunch of stuff. Here's a collection of songs. It's enough from album, boom, put it out. Right. Some people, there maybe is an underlying theme or an emotion to it. And in some cases, which sounds like this might be your case, it's a actual concept album. It's a concept that it's a mixture of things where it's like, it's a mixture of sounds, it's a mixture of emotions, it's a mixture of concepts, it's, and it's also an underlining theme that circulates into the end of the album, and if you listen to it, like I try to make sure that the album is an experience before it's a sing before the singles experience. You know what I'm saying? So it's like it makes sense that track two goes into track three. It makes sense that track four goes into track five, and then track five references track three, or like you get what I'm saying? Oh, so for sure, dude. The album experience is like dying. You know what I'm saying? It's up to us to keep it alive, though. Yeah, exactly. I mean, there are great albums. Don't get me wrong, but like, it, at least like being promoted as like, wow, this is. Why do you think? Life. Why do you think it's dying? Well, I'm curious because I feel like it's single based. Your explanation of why you record your album the way you do is because for you, it's about the art first, right? And the marketing is secondary. And I, I try to tell my artists all the time: create selfishly. When people are like building their marketing into the creative process, man, I feel like it's cheaping in what they do. Yeah, really. I'm sorry for anyone, like even even commercial artists. I feel like that's not the best way to do I, it. I'm not gonna lie; it is convenient to do it that way because, like, these days people's attention spans is like you got you got to give them like one, two, one, two, another one, another yeah, one, another one. You know one, what? One. Like, I I see that it's just like fucking chasing trends, man. That's like true. when we give into trends, like we are just as guilty as the people that started that shit to begin with. Right, and if no right. one breaks those trends, it's only gotten worse. Right, right. I mean, the album experience has been dying ever since set the CD came out because yeah. it's we made it too easy to skip songs. Right, we right, made it too yeah, easy now right. to not even skip songs on, a, on an album. Right. Now with streaming, we've made it so easy to skip to the next artist. Albums should be like movies. Yes, you should listen to it from beginning to end. Right. That's why physical media is so important, especially something like record. It's laid out in a way where the listening experience is taken into account. Where, okay, you can do... 25-ish minutes on this side and almost the same on the other side. We have to present it in a certain way and you kind of have to edit your concept into it. And I like that. I think it works out because that is like the ideal human attention span. Right. This short attention span, like that that shit does not work for the arts. It yeah, does not it, work. It doesn't, man. Because but you're always worried about what the next thing is, man. Yeah, you, true. you don't, most people don't allow themselves to to live in what they're experiencing when it comes to the arts. Right, right. And that's what we're losing, man. Yeah, yeah. Like I, people are more than what is face value, right? And then singles are like I don't want to say it's completely face value because you are express. It is expression of art, but when you have something to say in a body of work, is completely different than what you have to say in just one shot. Like with Marvin Gaye, what's going on? The whole album has a whole theme to it. There's a lot of social political stuff. There's a lot of stuff of heartbreak. There's Absolutely. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, he, he was pretty diverse with his uh, topic. Right, you know what I'm saying? So, Give me your opinion on this. I recently on Facebook saw another hip-hop artist say that for him, the whole hip-hop scene now is 90% business and 10% music. Yeah, what do true. you think about that? That's true. Is it true? It's true. But is that good or bad? I don't know. 
I don't know. But like I, so I, I actually got on there saying is like, you know what? A big part of the conversation we're having, we're having right now is I think that people are too obsessed with business. I agree. Art is way more important than business. I don't give a fuck what anyone says. I agree. When society eventually falls, you ain't going to go looking at for people's I, fucking tax records. I agree. Records. I agree. You're going to look for the artwork that was left behind, <laughs> right? I agree. Like I that's agree. what is important. And, but we, we measure everything in this country by how much it makes, how much it's worth financially. Now, not how much it's worth culturally right. or spiritually, culturally, which to me yeah. is so much more important. So much more. Nas is Illmatic took years to hit gold. Yeah. And that's a classic album. You can't mention hip hop. Ma- maybe the best one of all time. You get what I'm it's, saying? It's, it's, it's obviously subjective, each person, but I mean, yeah, that might be the best. His first album was a classic. You got Pete Rock, you got a Large Professor, you got oh, yeah. AZ, you got a, is the definition of a classic album. At the time, you know, I wasn't really making as wasn't making Michael Jackson <laughs> thriller. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> you know, it, it was like it that, was you know? it was I refer to hip hop as like our modern day folk music. Right. Just like I I call street art our modern day folk art. Right. Like when hip hop emerged, it was out of I don't want to say a necessity, but it came out of like a really bad time in a really bad area. Yeah. I mean the South Bronx where hip hop is credited to be birthed yeah. from, that shit was on fire. Yeah. Literally on fire. Right. I mean, you go to the Bronx now in the twenty twenties, there are still blocks after blocks gone yeah. from the fires in yeah. the nineteen yeah, seventies. Yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah. that's where this culture came from, man. Right, right. It wasn't about a commercial value. It's like and it goes right back if you follow black culture. It, even in the slave times and being here first coming to America, how song was so important in times of tribulation. Escapism. Yes. Yeah. Escapism. I hate when businesses take advantage of that it's a double-edged sword it, there's pros and cons to it because it's like artists unless there's a community of people a community of businesses a community of like money flowing through to make the art the most important thing unfortunately you know the the zeitgeist of the people and whoever's like being funded to be pushed into like major radio stations and stuff like that that's still king right now and it will be for a long time but you know i think anything is uh bottom up like you you already have a big leg up on a lot of artists because you're a part of a group of artists and at this point probably groups of artists because so many different artists you work with are probably in a similar position where they know these artists from different areas and i think that's what it takes is we kind of often have to build, at least in the United States, we have to create our own opportunities for ourselves. Right. Just like we did here at the Alternative Gallery. Right, right, right. You know, to have, that's what that's the most important thing. First, to have a spot for everyone to go to. Right. That people can start working on things together, collaborating, right. educating each other, and then hoping that people take those ideas and do the same thing elsewhere, right. and then we collaborate, we right, cross-pollinate, right, right. and then we keep growing. And then it's not just Allentown. Then you have trenton and redding and you're linking up with newark and parts of new york city Mm -hmm. and now you have this network and less and less you're on your own and more and more you can impact those bigger factors we just mentioned and i think they have to be impacted man because like i mean are you surviving solely as an artist these days like how did how is that like working for you Nah, man i'm definitely not no um i i i got a you know i got a job as a mold technician Art is something that makes me happy. It brings joy in my life, and I, I won't ever let go of that. Good you for know? you, man. You Glad know what I'm saying? I won't ever let go of that. Now, now, granted, I won't. I won't. I might not be at the same pace as other artists when when they do do this full time and they just like they just shitting out albums or like like all the time. But I know that it's the one thing that I'm sure in my life at this moment it brings me a lot of tranquility. I hold that to that value more than like what what can it give to me in materialistic wise where where now granted i i have got money before before is it's not it's not like it's it's not possible for me it is possible for me and i have got money for it before but it's just like i don't see an end result other than me actually doing it you know what i'm saying that that that's what brings me the most joy so the process for you is kind of the most important part right it yeah, is yeah. it really even is. more than the finished product it really is it really is because it's like it's a different feeling when it's like when you talk about, you know, what's happening inside of you, it's hard to relay that sometimes in real time with other people or even with yourself. When you have something to express and you have like a blank canvas and you just go, 
it's hard to describe that to somebody who doesn't know how that's like. You know what I'm and saying? And that's why I think artists are lucky because they found a process to do that. Right. And I feel like so many people who didn't find something like that, like they seem like the ones that are really stuck in life. Right. They, they don't know what they love. They don't know where they fit in too right. often, man. Right. Oh, that's yeah. That's why I would say artists are lucky. We found what we love. Right. And to me, that's more than half the battle. Yeah, 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 bro. Depending like, who you are, someone like you, the process, that's more than half the battle for someone like yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, I'm telling you, like, it, it really is because it's like there, there, there's a lot of, especially with, man, sometimes I feel like the world doesn't understand me, so I just I just vent out. Whether I put it out or not, I vent out in my, in, in my rhyme book and just get it out of me, you know what I'm saying? I don't know if there's a lot of things besides going to the gym, maybe, maybe going to the gym, maybe doing that, that, that's cool, but, like, when you're an artist... That's another avenue you could take. Yeah, because you can potentially have that outlet even while you're at work on break or right, already right. at home. Yeah, I, I write on my breaks. Yeah, because going to the gym isn't as accessible as maybe just getting out your phone or a notebook and writing some stuff down yeah, quick, yeah, man. Yeah, 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 exactly. And then put it into poetry and then put it into rhythm, just making something special out of nothing. Yeah, so how does the creative process work for you? Like, do you just write or do you typically write to a beat? How does it usually work for I, you? I, I hear beats. And I, I try to see what emotions it conveys for me, genuine emotions that, that that it conveys for me. So it's like you have to be in a different mode versus like when you're in a cypher, I, I'm here to talk my shit. You know what I'm saying? That's I, what they're for. I, I'm here to talk my shit. You got to talk more shit <laughs> yeah, to the next guy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Hell v yeah. Versus, versus like when I, when I hit, when there's a soul beat and I'm like, there's a lot of stuff that I, I, I'm harboring right now. And it's, there's a lot of like stuff that I, I struggle with. I need to express that. How can I convey words with that? What metaphors work well for how I feel? What best describes where my mind state is at right now? You seem pretty prolific too, man. It seems like you're always creating and releasing stuff. Like you said, you said you wrote this three years ago. I imagine you've written a lot since then. Oh yeah, I mean, I've been doing, I've been, I've been doing it for other artists. I've been doing ciphers, and I've also been like doing like little snippets of just sixteen bar verses online, and and that's for me to just get it out there. You know what I'm saying? Um, I got songs that I've written that haven't been released yet. But I'm like, man, I'm losing focus, like, cause this album has been <laughs> has been in the shelf for a while. So I I have to I have to focus on that and then bring those things out, cause those things are actually present to how where I'm at. That three years ago was me three years ago. Now, granted, some of the things that I said in three years ago, I feel like it's kind of creepy because I feel like there's certain things that's like, oh. That kind of happened like years later. <laughs> so you, you, you pulled the Simpsons with that yeah, shit. I yeah, exactly. You're predicting the future. Right, exactly. That was like, damn, that, 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 that's crazy. That, that, that event really And I'm, I'm sure also, um, too, some of the stuff you talked about maybe hasn't changed in those three years. And like, shit, man. This yeah. is unfortunately still relevant. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, like that, the, the, the Trump stuff, I'm like... That, that that's gonna hit. I thought I thought it was gonna go away ever since he will stop being president. But now I'm like, oh, okay, this is more relevant now. <laughs> yeah, this Cheeto dust motherfucker. Yeah, needs to yeah, just do his exactly. Time and get yeah. over with, bro. Right, go right. to jail. Right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? So going back to the creative process, you know, I know you said you record at home. How does that process work? Like, how often are you recording? Is it a regular thing? Do you have a typical schedule? Or just when you're inspired. I haven't been. I haven't been recording as as frequent as I am, to be honest. Um, but uh, there was a point where I was recording almost every day. I was making my own beats. I wasn't trying to make any songs. I was just trying to make verses and then like just say whatever that that comes up you know now, i imagine um, in some situations this is kind of like getting down ideas when you maybe work with another producer or even collaborate with another hip-hop yeah, artist yeah. that wants to jump on an mc yeah 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 definitely definitely man this is what i love about home recording that it opens up and makes it accessible to pretty much anyone yeah yeah don't do that studio stuff man get your own equipment Get your own equipment. Uh, I need to get get some more equipment. I need to update my equipment, actually. But yeah, it, it's better at home. It's way better. You could be yourself. You could be relaxed. You can no just rules, sit man. There, you're you not know, paying for your you're, time. Right, you're not paying for your time. Yeah, you're, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, you, know, you don't have to worry about time. You could erase certain things. Like I'll get this. I'll get back to this later. You can say that. But you I know? imagine you have a bunch of producers that you work with, like yeah. your, your typical guys. Like how many, who all worked in this new album producer-wise? Um, it's due to Anno Domini, producer, uh, I, I would say like Union, I guess, um, if I were, if I, for lack of a better, better term. But I would say there was like five producers in this. Uh, some of them, uh, they have some soul trappish and some boom bap stuff mix, mixed in together. The first time you work with these specific first producers? First time, yeah. My nice. first time. My first time. Oh, how was um, that? Was that good? You like yeah, that? Yeah, it was good. Yeah. It was good. It was good. I mean, like, I, when I heard the beats, I was like, 
yeah, let me let me do it. But like when I was picking out the beats, it's, it's like I won the con- see see I won a contest, the first place for it, and the contest is called Best Rapper Alive. Dope. No, and I won first. I won first place. Why? Where's your fucking shirt, man? <laughs> Bragging about that. I'm a humble guy. I'm black thought. <laughs> black <laughs> I'll, thought I'll wear one for you. Yeah, I got you. I got you. I get you a shirt. Yeah. So I won the best rapper alive contest, and uh, they, they 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 give you like a whole library to choose from, and get 15, 15 tracks to choose from. So I specifically I was like, okay, since I'm making an album, I'm gonna take my time looking to do this library and see what sounds like an intro, what sounds like an outro, what sounds like, wow. you, you get what I'm saying? And then, and then give credit to whoever whoever the producers in because they got a bunch of producers that work for them. I guess they submit their beats to them and sure, yeah. the, to the public. One of the amazing things about the internet, it opens it up for that kind of stuff. Right, yeah. right, right. Yeah. Definitely, definitely. But yeah, like the, the producers that are in there, like Oscar Mike, um, Dancing, super talented. April 26th is coming out, right? April 26th. Yes. And when you first release it, it's going to be on streaming only streaming or only. physical media as well? If physical media is like right right now, um, I'm just be honest. My finances hasn't been the greatest. So uh, my merch and uh, CDs and stuff like that, that's going to take some time. Are you trying to tell me as an independent artist in the United <laughs> States, you're not wealthy? <laughs> Come on, man. That doesn't sound anything like all the other I artists know, I know. I know. Right, right. I know that's hard to believe. But. Fuck, man. I'm so tired of hearing this story, man. <laughs> it's go- But it is going to come. I'm not going to give up on the album. I'm, I'm going to... It's going to release, though, on the 26th, regardless. Music videos, CDs, merch. That's you know it's gonna feel money. so nice for you to finally get this out there for three years, it, man. It really, it, it, it's like a it's big a big ass relief, project, a big relief. I had this before I had the beard, bro. Like, <laughs> damn, you look quite distinguished now. I like uh, yeah, it, man. Thank you, like thank it, you, like thank it. you, man. Thank you. Like, I always say this, it's like, this, oh, that happened before the beard. This happens after. This after pre beard, the post-beard. before times. Yeah. <laughs> See. See what happened in the pandemic? All kinds of new shit happens. Now, right. let me ask you this. Are you doing any kind of like record release party for the album? Uh, Yeah, I was planning on doing a listening party. Uh, I was looking up places, but I, <laughs> like I said, I, I wasn't really. <laughs> well, dude, man, hit me up. If you guys want to do a show here, man, you know, I'd yes, be happy I to open the space. To. You just saw the new, to. what's new to you, the Duh, new stage bro, setup. That stage setup is crazy. I would love for you to host an event here, man. Oh, man, I would love to, bro. Yeah, and let's you know, talk. You, you should also talk to your uh, your dudes over at Grind Mode Cypher because yeah. it's been quite a few years and they yeah. shot in the basement yeah. this time if they want to do it in the gallery yeah, with the yes, stage, yes, the backdrop yes, and shit, yes, man. Yes, 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 yes. Bring it Let's in, do this. Let's yeah. do this. Well, you know, you get when you got people here and you, you're getting things involved and going, it just it I don't know, it seems easier to do your own shit. Right. That's what I seem to get out of it, man. You know, right. inspiration needs inspiration. Doesn't matter how talented you are, bro. Right, right. If you're not motivated or inspired or even in the right position to work on something, you're not gonna get shit done, man. Yeah, definitely. And definitely. to me, like one of the saddest things is like wasted potential and wasted talent, man. Right, right. Not right. saying that's what you are, but I'm no, just saying, but I, like, I, that's something I need to hear because, like, I, 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 I'm not gonna lie. Past couple of months have been not not the most motivational months. No, <laughs> you have any kind of like writer's block or anything? There's a writer's block. Yeah. Like, here's the thing, like. When life is telling you to focus on other things, it's hard to like get in full throttle on one thing because especially you're doing the juggle game, right? Yeah, it's pulling you all directions. Yeah, man. yeah, you're doing I the juggle game. You, you know what I'm saying? Like, and like sometimes like you you, you get a grasp of it. Sometimes like you fumble. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So like, um, but I would say this: I don't know the exact situation, but at the right. very least, man, make sure you try to carve out some time for yourself to work on this stuff because yeah. it seems like the process for you is almost therapeutic and helpful. In it a really way. is. It really is. And when is. you don't give that to yourself, it makes dealing with the other shit more difficult. Yeah. So yeah. do yourself right, man. Yeah, this is this is gonna save my life. I'm gonna tell you that right now. I'm not gonna go into it, but this is gonna save my life. Well, um, I love I love when art can be helpful in that way. Man. Yeah, it's yeah. it's it's a really powerful tool, man. That people yeah. underestimate. It's not just pretty things on a wall or nice music to hit, listen to, man. It's right. like sometimes it is the matter of life or death. I know that's dramatic and extreme. Yeah, in that, a lot I was of cases, about to say that. Like I know that's dramatic. It sounds dramatic, but it sounds it's dramatic. True. Even you, but you know what? Us artists are dramatic people. Yeah. So it's like dramatic, meaning like you could fully release what's in your spirit, right? You could fully express yourself. Because a lot of people don't don't know how to express themselves. Yeah, right? yeah, so, yeah. Um, when it comes to art, you could be one with your spirit if you're into that type of stuff. But if you're into that concept. Um, no, I think more and more people are warming up to that idea of how important the arts are. Right. I mean, 
you would have thought it would have been during the pandemic when everyone was kind of like stuck inside, right. listening to music, reading right. books, playing video games. Like that's all that's all fucking artists doing that. Yeah, right, Who right. thinks making that shit? Right. Yeah, it ain't exactly. CEOs. Yeah, no, no. They're too busy. No. They're too busy counting their billions, man. They don't no, got shit. No, they no. don't got time for shit no, else, man. No, no, no. But it takes a creative mind. It takes a due diligence of the execution. It takes uh, a lot of uh, emotional depth in order to you know fully express yourself and be be an individual um and it's like no matter where you go and you meet these artists man it's almost like they're hometown artists to you because you're going through the same thing right right, right? all these different ciphers like where are some of the places you've gone to cipher like where have you traveled i went to west virginia denver north carolina uh philly new york um, and what have these experiences been like traveling, working with other artists, man? Oh, it's great. Um, you get to meet them and you get to see what, what people's skill sets are and you get to see what the, the, the local scene is actually like. Went down south a couple of times, but like not just because it's down south doesn't mean it's all trap and all that stuff. There's boom, there's a boom bap seat over there. There's too. diversity everywhere. There's diversity everywhere. Yep. And there's nothing wrong with trap or anything like. There's some dope trap artists and sure. and drill artists. But I'm just saying, like, the it's diversity. not just that. Yeah, it's not just that yeah. down there. I'm a big fan of Little Brother. I'm a big fan of J Cole. So it's like they're cool. from, they're from they're from the south. So. Yeah, and they yeah, make yeah. Boom bap stuff. But uh, yeah, man, it's, it's it's nice to see artists and see to be motivated and like you have to surround yourself with other people who are doing the things that you love to do so it could bring you out of your shell and so you could do you could have the motivation and pride there's a lot of artists right now that be hitting me up on my dm dms just giving me motivation be like Yo, just, just 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 keep on going bro like we we got you you know what i'm saying and like i'm, I'm blessed for that you i'm know glad I mean? you got that man you know what I'm, I'm really saying? glad you got that. So, and we got to make sure other artists who don't have that, man, we got to find them a way to get that too. Yeah, yeah, we we just need to bring the the attitude, promote the attitude out there, you know what I'm saying? Cuz it's, it's a lot of competition. I understand hip hop is a very competitive. It's like a competitive sport, you know, in a in a, in a, in a sense. But at the same time, you know, we all, you know, there, there, there's enough room out for all of us to eat and for us to express ourselves and I th I think, well, enjoy our individualities and you know what i'm saying i think a lot of people in hip-hop especially the kind of artists you work with they realize now how special it is and that it is an actual culture right and that if you don't nurture that and work together yeah it might go away yeah yeah, yeah. you know and that's the thing when artists don't have other people to work with man it's right. daunting it's yeah. really daunting so it's like you and i are lucky in an, an additional way because we are used to this way of collaborating with other artists. Right. You know, think about like just a painter that maybe doesn't know any other artists and all they do is sit in their studio or the room and paint mm -hmm. and they don't even know what it's like to work with another artist or even to speak to another artist. Right. And here we are on a somewhat regular basis. Like I come from filmmaking, very collaborative mm -hmm. medium of art. Fire. And you're regularly doing these ciphers, yeah, yeah, yeah. which is like anywhere from like five to 50 MCs <laughs> yeah, who knows yeah. how many are jumping in. <laughs> Which, by the way, I listened to the newest one recently, the new Grandma uh, Cypher, dude. Shit is fucking dope, Thank man. you. you guys, thank you so much. Everyone thank on that track so was like, really? Yeah, yeah, man. Uh, shout out to Frankie V and uh, Mr. Misk, man. They, they, they spaz on that and that stuff. Uh, Jermaine, Croon, Maine the Medicine, that's his name. Who else is on that Cypher? Excuse me, about, uh, my, my bad if I'm missing a, an artist on that one. That's all right. We're linking it up so everyone can hear and see for themselves, Yeah, man. yeah, 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 man. Shout out to everybody, man. Uh, Y'all guys are geniuses, man. For real, Frankie V had a had a whole uh, uh, <laughs> he had a laundromat scheme. Ah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nice. So he so he was he was, he was mentioning all types of references about you know like V necks and yeah yeah stuff, and talking <laughs> shit and talk about taking your girl at the same time. Fucking amazing. So, <laughs> dude. Yeah, no, it was solid. The man. geniuses. Yeah. Another song that I was playing on repeat for a while there was that light up the mic song you were on. Oh yeah, thank dude, you. that shit was dope. Thank you, yeah, thank yeah, you, yeah. thank that you. That was a great. Whose record was that on? That was on the the Goon Mode album. That's a collaboration between grime mode and snow goons oh dope, dope. um they had uh, uh intel second generation Wu. he's in that cypher second gen wu tang second generation wu tang wow yeah he's wu in fam the, yeah wu fam a-okay -okay, lingo and uh the other names are oh man the other names are escaping me i'm so i'm sorry but i, I can't remember everybody's that's name right. Dude, there's a lot of so artists, many artists bro. yeah 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 that's an example of like okay there's some heavy hitters here yeah you gotta you gotta bring your a game you know what i'm saying for so, sure man um you know and one of the things i was thinking about earlier just getting ready for this episode was you've shot videos here you've done photo shoots here in the past yeah, you've yeah. been involved you've done shows here 
one of the ways we collaborated that maybe was my favorite was when you gave us music for Queen City, the oh, Arts yeah, Fest yeah, documentary. And I, and I thank you so much for that. I was so happy about Dude, that. Dude, thank me. It was a perfect <laughs> song. When you saw it all pieced together with the footage of the hip hop section, yeah. with the, the graffiti panels and the B-Boys, which I'm going to include that in the show notes as well because yeah. we use that. I liked it so much. It was one of the trailers for the documentary. Yes, it was. And then my boy DJ Holic, remember he, he yep. scratched and mixed mm-hmm, on it, mm-hmm. took it to an even another level man right, right, which right. i don't you, you never shout, met Hop. yeah i met him before met yeah, him, shout out to holic man yeah shout man. Out to Hol- i wonder how he's doing man i'm gonna talk to him in a minute but i do he apparently has a studio like right down the street here and really? i haven't been there oh, yet man. man i gotta i gotta, I gotta stop being yeah. a hermit and talk to him let's let's go <laughs> find him one day man yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Because i've known him since like middle school wow that's crazy we used to go to school together that's crazy and i mean he and he's stuck with the turntablism man that's what's up and I'm, I was actually, well, I was going to ask you that before when you're talking about going to this hip hop school, is it only MCing or do they do other elements of hip hop? They, 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 they have a producer thing and they have a producer side. To what about it turntablism? Well. Turntable, maybe, I don't know. I got to ask. Dude, because I, I, I love, it's like such, one of my favorite art forms is the turntable as an instrument. Oh, yeah. Uh, that, that's a missing art form too. Dude, the, the beat junkies and those guys, like, right, you know, having right. multiple turntables, each doing a part and kind of creating a song live. Yeah, that, that's not Dude, easy. Fucking that, mind that, blowing. That's, stuff. that's not easy trying to try. No. To blend in stuff and making no. it sound like there's a technique to it there's a yeah. heart to that as well so yeah like, and holic is the, i mean he's the real deal he's been scratching on vinyl since oh yeah he's like fast on that yeah he's fast on that so that was a great project what you know so after this album comes out do you have other plans or are you going to see what, what happens next man? um you know i know that we just talked about the the single game how do that but there's just there's singles that i want to get out okay. my chest as well I have this idea of doing like a a producer rapper duo, just like back in the days. Um, how it used Eric to be, and Rakim, yeah, Eric B and Rakim, P Rock and P Rock and CL Smooth. Oh, dude, that fucking know? record is still like incredible. So I, I'm still looking for Mecca and the Soul Brother. Right, right, right. Like I'm, I'm looking for who to do that with because mm. I want to do something like that. You know, doesn't even have to be uh, anyone local, does it? Could be from anywhere. It could be from anywhere. If I like your vibe and I like your style, I wouldn't mind doing like an eight-track EP or anything. Which like you that. should also release on an eight-track, right? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And that's another thing about album making too. Whereas, like, you you work with one producer, you choose a choose a sound, his style of sound versus yeah. your style of thing, and then you got to see what you come up. Well, with. Black Thought's been doing that a lot. He did those uh, the streams of thought, right? Volume yeah, streams one, two, of three. thought for ninth. And, yeah, um, yeah. Where he'd have like a different producer every record, and it'd be like mm-hmm. two sessions, six or seven songs. Yeah, that's what I want to do. And then he did the one with the uh, Alchemist, which was mm-hmm. fucking insane. Yes, yes, yes. Dude, yes. he's like, and then L's Michael Affair. Yeah, like, yeah, 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 dude. yeah. He did the Glorious Game. That that Black that, Thought. That you were just too album. ridiculous, bro. It's yeah. fucking insane. And so that that's what that's what I want to lean towards after this. That's great. I love that a lot. Man. Um, so I could like you know bring that back, and it won't be as daunting because I could just do like eight tracks. You know what I'm saying? This yeah. one was 15 tracks, and I was really thinking through how this thing is gonna. So you're looking at more like there. an EP than a full length, right? Right. right. And I, I don't, don't want to do. I want to do that because it's. It, and to be quite honest, it's kind of manageable for my life right now. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So are you trying to like put together in the future any kind of like almost national tours, like get going around the country? Because that's a great way to link with new audiences. Oh, yeah, like oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. I don't it, care it, how great streaming is. That's the way to do it. If my job allows it. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> do you need me to write them a note? Yeah, please, I will write them a fucking note. Please, note. please, please, please. <laughs> I, I just started this job, and I'm like, I finally getting to a point where it's like, I got, I got the job where I could like, you know, set up my foundation, and then I could put into the music now. You know what I'm saying? Nice. So right, so it's, it's gonna take a little bit of time before I get crazy on the tours. Um, shout out to my peers though. I my, I like like show rock and my grandma people and um, Tony Dimes. Shout out to them. They went to. Europe and wow, I know, I know, I know you know Adlib. He, he keeps yeah. tra- he keeps traveling around. He's you know uh, he's saying? he's in Florida now. Yeah, yeah, that's crazy. So like, what, yeah, shout out to those guys. I'm curious but, though, what what did they say the response was to their music in Europe? Their music in Europe, yeah, yeah it's great. I mean, yeah. like they're receptive over they're receptive over there. You yeah, know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. That like they they love they they they're more embracive of that type of hip hop than I don't know. I, it's kind of hard to say because they 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 also got their mainstream thing out there. Too. Sure. So it seems like the avenues that you take out there, it seems more welcoming than the avenues out here. But is is that kind of what we want to have here more? Yeah, I, I would love that to be a thing, you know what I'm saying? Because it's like the genre feels appreciative. 
it's not a popular game. You know what I'm saying? It's not a pop. It's not it's like like what the, what the most Def said. He was like, uh, hip hop didn't start with pop sensations. You know what I'm saying? It didn't start off that way. Correct. Uh, it, it, it's a, it's it's like a it's a it's a folklore culture. It's meant for the people. So what I said. It's our folk music, man. Yeah, right. And I feel like whenever I, I hear about other artists going down there in the UK, it feels like that's more embraceive than out here in America. Yeah, it's just so crazy reading about like you know the 1930s of how the how United States didn't take jazz serious and how yeah. when Louis Armstrong and all the jazz musicians first started going over there, how they were embraced and they were shocked yeah. that there were not not just audiences but also journalists that were taking them seriously, right, which right. was not the case here. Right. I mean, look how long it took journalists to take hip hop music seriously in the United States. Right, right. I right. mean, up until like the early 2000s. Yeah, don't let the zeitgeist of I keep saying zeitgeist, but it's just it's true. That well, don't don't let the the environment dictate how you should feel about your music. Which I think a lot of people you know? are very much products of their environment. Right, exactly. And don't that's don't that's why art is important, man, because it shows you different canvases, different yeah. things you can you know venture into. Right, right. Because right. so so many people they are very much just whatever they grew up around, mm-hmm. and you know like. I've talked about this before in the podcast, but I think what one of the issues is with the arts in the United States is a lot of people that aren't artists themselves, they have this preconceived notion that if they go out to an art gallery, they're going to be judged. They're going to be made fun of because they don't know enough about certain art styles That's stupid. or they're not dressed <laughs> a certain way because on some in the higher class areas of art, there is an elitism to it. Mm-hmm. And if you don't have a seat at the table, we that's, don't want you here. You ain't that, that's hundred percent bullshit. Well, that's a big problem. But <laughs> a lot of people, absolutely, that's why they don't go out to art galleries. I'm telling you right now, that's hundred percent bullshit. Of course art, it is. Art, 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 of course art it doesn't is. discriminate. It's, it's no. for it's for everybody. I mean, if you whoever go to, wants to do it, if you go to some of those rich galleries, maybe that'll be true. But yeah. I think if like, but that, that's because they're real, setting real that. Artists, that's because they're setting that. Standard. Well, they're they're treating they're treating it as the business end of things more right. than the artistry of it, which right. is. For someone like you and others that are just, we love this most importantly. If we can make this our full time profession, amazing. But even if we can't, I'm still doing this. Uh, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's gonna it, it's gonna get go to me to my grave. I'll tell you that right now. As, as as long as I don't lose my voice, I'm good. Like I'm I'm not losing this. This is the one thing I know that. There's a lot of things in my life that could disappear from my life, and there's a lot yeah. of things that I'll have it here for one minute, for a good minute, and then it'll, and then it's gone. That will never leave me. I know that for a fact. Yeah. Unless people could see that and see what that that feels like, they're not going to understand the importance of it. How is important in human culture? You know what I'm saying? And for how sure, much man. we need it. Unless, like you said, like once uh, society goes to crap, yep. then we start taking. Just shit like that, seriously. Yeah, yeah, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. So, well, I think um, what really scared the shit out of everyone is if all of a sudden the artists pulled their music off of Spotify, people are gonna be where the fuck do I get my music? Right. Well, exactly. Right. It, you can't just have one thing. Like you the, need the, to. Well, where's the thrill? Like, there's no thrill of like discovering. You now, because you, you do physical media, right? Yeah. When you can, right? Yeah. Now, what is like? Do you usually sell out of your physical media, or are most people just coming through on streaming? Uh, the, the streaming physical media comes at shows, so yeah. it's like that's the best place to get it. And, 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 and also, yeah. and also, uh, online. Whoever's paying attention to you, whoever's like fully engaged with what you're doing, you can hand them personally. Yeah, I don't know how it is with major distributions. Yeah. But um, there's still somebody that's in my friends list that, that was like, yo, you remember that CD you gave me like almost like 10 years ago? I'm like, no, I don't remember. <laughs> that that, that kind of like is a different feeling. Like yeah. it's, it's different when you actually personalize. For sure, man. In addition to that, the every, transfer. every physical, every piece of physical media is kind of like a piece of art if you think about it, right. you know, or an artifact thinking, depending how you look at it. Right. Because we're at a point now where as far as technology, we don't need physical media. Right. Technically, we do not need it if we want to access music and stuff. But at the same time, like that's not the world I want to live in. That's a very cold, uncaring, yeah. non-spiritual world, man. Yeah. Ain't no soul to that shit, no, man. No, 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 and no. the thing is, like, I think it's super important that artists let people know, like, yo, if you're really a fan of my stuff, man, buy a shirt, buy a record, buy a CD, because that's where I'm going to make any kind of money. Right. Because it takes, it's 3,330 streams on Spotify to sell one $10 CD to make yeah, the same amount of yeah, money. Yeah. 
So if you're really a fan of Cap Sizzle or any artist you like, if they got any kind of merch, buy that shit. Yep, yep, and that's coming soon. That's coming soon. I know, I know, I know. I've been slacking on trying to. Well, I won't say slacking. you're not slacking. Life I'm is not tough, man. slacking. I'm not that's slacking. Not. I'm not slacking. Once it's right, it's there. So it's available for everybody who wants it. So. You you wrote, recorded, and produced a whole feature length album, man. Yeah. You ain't slacking anything. Yeah, yeah, Doesn't yeah. matter how long it took. <laughs> Even if you took your entire life to make this one record, you did it, man. Right. You right, fucking right, did right, it. Right, yeah. And that's one of the things we need to celebrate. Like, I think we get so caught up in the what's next, even for us as artists, that we don't really stop to appreciate this milestone of like, fuck, I finished a piece of art. Yeah, bro. Bro, you created a feature length album. Bro, it's, it's, it's wild. Is this your first feature record? <laughs> my first feature, like, I had a mixtape before, but this, this is different. This is a different I'm gonna feeling. say this, don't stop doing mixtapes, of course, because oh, yeah, I love course. the culture mixtapes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But bro, this is your first feature. My first album. And now you know you can do it. First album. And if first you want to, album. if inspiration strikes yeah. and the process takes you it's there. Gonna, there's more to come. Good. I like to hear that, there's man. There's more to come. There's more to come. And you got a lot of insight that you can share with young artists. Do you see like younger kids and the younger generation getting into this just like you did? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. There is a whole generation of artists out there, very youthful um, generation that are exposed to what we're exposed to as well. You know what I'm saying? Uh, now, granted, now, a lot of the pop art caters to the youth, but I don't underestimate the youth because of that. There's youthful artists out there. Well said. That love MF Doom, that love Talib Kweli, that love, you know what I'm saying? And, cannabis. And it's because other people, cannabis, because other people put them on. You know what I'm saying? Nobody talks about cannabis. Enough, cannabis bro. is a monster. Cannabis, yeah. cannabis. Him and Rocky Yeah, yeah. They're, 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 you, don't, you don't want to be on their bad side on no. the mic. No, 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 no. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Rock Hill's a god MC, so yeah. Um, I, it, to, he is like the he's the top of the pyramid for right, me, man. Right. So how did like you first get involved with hip hop or exposed to it? Like, what made you fall in love with this to put you on this path? I used to write uh, just feelings on paper. Um, even as a nine, kid, yeah, even as a kid, just feelings on paper. Um, and then eventually, my dad would play his. So he used to he used to record uh, cassette tapes. From Hot 97 and, yeah. and um, Kiss FM and you all that stuff. still got those tapes? He's, yeah, he still got tapes. Bro, let me, digi- let me digitize <laughs> that you. shit. Look, yeah, that's what yeah, yeah no doubt, no doubt, no doubt, yeah. Fuck and, yeah. And he'll always there. play those things, you know what I'm saying? It was always around the house. So my dad really is, uh, you know, he, he really is responsible for me being exposed to a lot of good music um because back then they had a lot of freestyles on hot 97 mm-hmm. too man yeah yeah yep. the monday night mixtape with dj clue yeah 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 and he uh he had a lot of like stuff that came out first through the radio before it became on a cd and he recorded that shit Dope, man. <laughs> you know what i'm saying did he collect so, mixtapes too uh i don't know about mixtapes Mo- but, like, but, but yeah, yeah. most mo- mostly radio stuff um hot 97 was, was like the epicenter of the culture back right then. right right he'll have like uh, uh mr magic molly mar he'll have um the, the beef between them and um uh, MC, MC Shan, Shan and all that stuff. Um, you'll have you have live recordings of wow that whole debacle. <laughs> the bridge is over. The bridge is over. The bridge is over. You know. So I will always have that around my house. So um, it, it didn't hit me li- till later to like okay, let me try this. Let me see how this this is when 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 I write something. Wow. Now, when you first tried it, did you have other people around you already doing it, or did you kind of mm-hmm. just like wow? No. Oh. So when did you first start collaborating? Oh, later, much later, much uh, later, much later. When I hit, when I, I, to be honest, when I hit Allentown, really, yeah. How old were you roughly? Um, Allentown, man. like twenties. No, 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 no. I was, I was here uh, for a minute. Um, for uh, <laughs> my first ever collab was actually in a reggaeton. Uh, <laughs> reggaeton songs. Okay, um, that's not what I expected. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But I was the only. <laughs> see, I'm, I'm, I'm a disgrace to my culture. But I, I was the only one that was speaking English in <laughs> uh, <laughs> the entire uh, thing. And, and you know, I'm, 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 you know, I don't speak Spanish, so like I speak a little bit, un poquito, but mm. not 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 fluently to be rapping on. Like, sure, I should though. Yeah. Shame on me, but I should. That's for uh, when the beard is down. Yeah, that's when the, the beard, Yeah, right, right. <laughs> And you fucking got a wizard beard. Right, right, now right. Gandalf. You're the master. Gandalf, yeah, exactly. You're like gonna go Gandalf isolate shit. yourself for ninety days and just right, master right. a language. Yeah, in Puerto Rico, somewhere in a cave. <laughs> Caps is the yeah, white. Yeah, exactly. <laughs>
<laughs> but uh yeah it was it was through um uh reggaeton it was two artists two reggaeton artists one one, one was name is jay that was here in allentown that, allentown yeah. okay one artist's name is jay he's still doing his thing shout out to him uh fd i don't know what he's up to these days but um yeah i used to record at fd studio and just rap <laughs> do whatever and just just because i had access to a studio there were good dudes too so nice man um and that led you to meeting other rappers eventually let me have other rappers and just writing more getting interested in writing more I try to form a group uh there was a i'll try to form a group in them i would say like in early high school i was trying to form a wolf call uh, a group called a wolf pack um was it modeled after any specific rap group no not really i just like no? i just like how it sounded yeah, wolf group? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it didn't it didn't work out uh so some of them weren't really that, that into it like that so yeah isn't that you know um, that's that's one of the things you find out especially when you're collaborating with other artists you quickly yeah. find out who's serious and who's not and yeah, unfortunately yeah, yeah. not everyone's serious man. yeah right or right. can see it through right 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 and that's why like i kind of look at my journey kind of how i do right now where it's like it's my experience I have to cater to the experience of what it is to uh, process and produce myself first before having the idea of like making a Wu Tang or. <laughs> it's or like I said there, before, you know and, and one then, of my main bits of advice is create selfishly, bro. Right. Like, it has to start there. Right. Otherwise, right. like if you dilute yourself, like when you're on your own time, right. it's not going to work long term. At right. least. Most likely not. Yeah, but then uh, ironically, you know, it, it gravitated to me to other artists, though. You know what okay. I'm saying? Great, so, man. like, of yeah, course, then, yeah. Then, then I, I don't know how I met Grimo. I, I completely, for, I don't even know how it's I met been Grimo. So long. It's been so long, but then, like, I naturally got to those circles. Nice, man. You know what I'm saying? By just, just doing me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, but you know, you're a great example of someone that started out without any other artists around them doing what they did and still eventually connected with those people. Right, Because right. I think there's, I think a lot of people are in your shoes when it comes to when they start art, with their artwork, any kind of artwork, whether it's visual or music, and they don't have anyone to connect with. And right. sometimes that's all it goes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you feel if everybody's trying to, you know, live life, right? Everybody's trying to pay their bills. Everybody's trying to, you know, deal with their own problems and, Real, real life. You know what I'm saying. When it comes to art, I, a lot of people don't have time for that. A lot yeah. of people, a lot of people don't like. I don't blame them for not taking it as serious because there's a lot in their shoulder. A lot of people in their in their, in their yeah. Place. Life is life is hard, man. Life Especially hard. right now, dude. Life, life is tough. But that's why you gotta make that your own. That's why you have to take art to your own heart and like treat it seriously on your own terms versus like trying to find like. Uh, the community is going to show up. You're going to have that magnet that's going to attract those other people, but you have to be the one to cater to what's in your heart, what, what, what's, what, what, what's, what's inside, because what's inside is going to attract what you want, right? Whether you like it or not, you know, it's just the law of attraction, right? So whatever is positive attracts other positive people. Whatever is negative attracts negative people. And I, and I, and I have negative things or negative events or negative people or anything like that, you know, and I've experienced both. Sure. So it's like, I think, it, and I, I also is. think it's important to experience both. Right, right. You have right, to know. Right. Now, let me ask so, you this: What is uh, what's the local hip hop scene in Allentown like right now? Is it is it good? I, ha I, I haven't checked in in a in a, in a minute. Yeah. I just see what's, what what people post. On, it <laughs> seems it seems a, a bit scattered. Like uh, I think people have moved away. Oh really? Yeah, it doesn't seem as I don't see as many shows. Maybe I'm just missing stuff. But well, 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 well you got you got a stage right here. We well, can bring that live. We, 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 we make do, that alive. We do have one. Uh, I think Grayson's doing one here. It's in mm. June. Oh, oh, Nightwing. Yeah, yes. Mm. So uh, hit him up if you want to do something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But in yeah. general, bro, I'm serious. Make this your spot, man. Yeah, definitely. And let definitely. other artists know that. Yeah, this definitely, spot is here. definitely, definitely, man. That seems like the move, though. You know yeah, what I'm saying? because I we need we need these spaces, man. Yeah, you know, it's yeah. Been a lot, even for us, it's been a lot of rebuilding since the pandemic, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mean, even things like parking, the parking situation has gotten a lot worse here since the start yeah, of the pandemic. Yeah. So oh. that makes it a little bit more difficult with having shows and how often we have shows. Right, right. And we're also all volunteers, too. And 
every time we have an event, that means we got to stop working on our own art or take time away from our lives to host events, which we love doing, but we have to be more choosy because there's so many factors at play here. Right. So you're a little bit disconnected from the scene right now, but I a think little bit, maybe yeah. after this album, I think everything, everything's going to change it, it, it will come. It will come back to, to form, original form. What would you like to see happen in this area? Because I mean, I, th- I feel like there's a lack of venues in general for the arts right now. I just want people to come together. I just want people to support each other. I don't want this whole thing like I see a lot and people talk about who's the best and who's uh, the best in out of town and all that stuff. And I'm like, and I go to other local scenes and I'm like, they do the same thing. And I'm like, yeah, I think they just get, can't get, help get, get, Just scrap that. Yeah. Scrap that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just, just have well, a place for everybody. It's an opinion based thing, so it's yeah. a little hard to answer that question. Have a place for everybody. Yeah, it's not like a race where there's one clear winner. Like right. this person crossed the finish line first. It's not. It's not mathematical. It's an. It's an right. opinion. Yeah, and to be quite honest, um, I haven't really been paying attention because I've been just ciphering <laughs> in other places. That's great. Dude. You know what I'm saying? So it's like I see other local scenes, and it's like I see like similar attitudes as well. So it's like just just get rid of that. Just just have have a place where it could be a, a safe haven for for artistry yeah. which is why i love this I, I love the art gallery i love this the alternative gallery i love this place because it feels like it's a safe haven for people who are like you people who are like me people who are like they feel like it's like a place where you could just sit here and just be like you could express yourself you could uh you know see all these memorabilia Oh, like like this this room is so dope. The I'm archive in my office here. Yeah, yeah, it is so crazy. Well, we want like, it to be overwhelming. I want there to be so many different things to reference and look at and learn from because one of my most favorite things that I've learned is everyone you meet knows something you don't. Right. I love that. Right. Yeah. So I also love the idea of not everyone you meet, but everywhere you go. And I want to be one of those really special places where there's like every corner you turn. There's new things to learn about. Right. Not even new things, like maybe new mediums of art, like our one buddy Will who makes all these crazy cigar box guitars and sculptures. And That's he right. was on a few episodes ago. He did this as a form of therapy after a bad car accident. Oh. We had to relearn to speak and motor functions and all that. And he it's like this amazing kind of outsider art that you would never expect to randomly find anywhere. He kept them going too. Yeah, truly. That's a great episode. I should send that to make sure you yeah, check yeah, that episode yeah, out because yeah, yeah, Will's yeah. amazing. We also did a seven minute documentary together, him and I, about his story. It's very inspiring. Well, his name is Will. That's, Will. that's a bar. Will Hefner, desensitized art. Yeah, that's that's, that's a bar. Yeah, that's a bar there yeah. somewhere. <laughs> so, you know, we've always wanted people to kind of steal the idea of the alternative gallery. Yeah. I don't want to be the only one. Right. Like I'm not I'm a fucking bad business person. I'm a terrible capitalist. I think at this point, capitalism is unfortunately the best system we got. I'm right there with you, brother. It's it's unfortunately the best system we got, but it only works when we have massive checks and balances, which, spoiler, we don't fucking have right now. That's why these wealthy companies are getting away with everything. It's disgusting. But we'll fix that shit. But it's a system that does work when enough of us take part in it, and I'm not in this to outdo the next person. I'm out this to provide opportunities and collaborate with artists. I want people to steal the idea of what we do. Create yeah. more places for people to make art. I'm not going to be mad about it. it no, nothing is original, to be quite honest. No. There's a term to steal like an artist mm-hmm. out there. You know, but like, not an AI artist. No, 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 no. That is definitely stealing. <laughs> that's definitely. But but like it's, it's true. Nothing is really new under the sun. It's just reformed and reshaped and brought into new life. And then, you know release out into the world and then for that particular thing to evolve into something else from somebody else and they'll take on it art is just like that what kind of music you listening to right now there are certain artists or there even oh yeah oh yeah i love uh little brother black thought there's certain tracks that i listen to just to study just to be like okay this is the top form mc stuff so let me try to take notes on what that's like. There's certain tracks that I listen to over and over again. I know it drives people crazy, but like you listen to this all the time. I was like, you don't understand. The way he did that is like I gotta understand it so I could do that. <laughs> you know, well, what you're, I'm you're listening to it. You're working when you're listening right, to it. right. I'm yeah. I'm kind of like in like a- analyst 
mode. I do a similar thing. I watch um, a lot of uh, movies and TV shows and documentaries because it's what I do. So right. to me, maybe it's sometime just a bullshit reason for me to feel like I'm not wasting my time. I'm watching a bunch of movies and shit. Eh, it's part of my process. I'm yeah, working. Right, 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 right. But the, you're actually doing there, it. There, see, here's, here's the thing. <laughs> there is a sense of of enjoying enjoyment when it comes to other things. Like I can listen to ratchet stuff myself. I yeah. can listen to, now granted, like people are the same. People that know me say bullshit, but like I do know like I I could enjoy a Megan Thee Stallion uh, song. I could listen to a little Uzi Vert song. Yeah. I could, you know, I, and just vibe with it. You know uh-huh. what I'm saying? But even in those songs, there's, there's there's some levels of genius that people don't really give credit. Yeah, you think to certain things? Yeah, you like, don't think that word's a little misused? Uh, I, I, see, here's the thing. There's <laughs> under, it, it's, very, it's very underlining, but it, there, yeah. there's certain things like there's an art to auto tune. There's an art to vibing uh-huh. into like trying to try to make it a, a laid back record sure there's an art to you know just make making a fun record there's an art to that because certain artists they can't do that they could do boom bap they could, they could be technical yeah and all that stuff but they can't make a record where it's like okay like if if i if i was driving uh in the middle of the night on the way to the club and i'm just trying to have a good time get my mind off of like serious stuff there's an art to like trying to bring that yeah well, even that, sometimes you, know you want to listen to something, you want to take um, it in. Sometimes you just need background music, right? Almost like right, white noise, right? 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 And and that, that that's one of the professors was was telling me. It was like, yo, you can't be stuck on just one feeling or one sound or one you know vibe. Like you have to see the genius, even though it's even though it may be bullshit, it may be like garbage lyrically or anything like that but like there's a level of genius of like why that's a vibe at least try to get where they were coming from right exactly there's a level of genius of like okay this this record is not being taken too seriously but like the 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 way that the hook comes in and it just makes you just be happy yeah you know that makes you want to jump around well and there's there's an art to that you know and that's important too because it's not necessarily you paying attention because you want to utilize it in some way but i think understanding external factors and forces and even different types of music for an art musician that maybe helps you understand your own stuff more right even if it's totally different right that's why it's really important for artists i hate to use this term but consume to right. listen to a lot of stuff, to watch a lot of stuff. Now, do you feel like, aside from that work part of listening and, and, and you know, consuming music, do you find the type of music you're listening to changing as you get older? Uh, that I'm listening to? Yeah. Yeah. Like, do you listen to I, only I, hip-hop or are you listening to bro, more like... I, I listen to lo-fi now. Lo-fi? Yeah. Okay. Lo- I, I don't need lyrics. Just chill, just chill beats? <laughs> I don't need lyrics. Just chill fucking beats? I don't need lyrics. Like, like right. that. It's, I, I could listen to an empty canvas. I'm good. <laughs> I like it. You know? And like, I don't need to put words to it. I guess I'm at a point where I put my own words to, to it. So I kind of imagine what I will say in those things. But it's Got just... But, but at the same time, it's like the instrumental of lo-fi is healing. It's therapeutic. Like... Uh, you could put lo-fi good in the car, blast the speakers, and it's a nice day. Let the wind hit your hair, let your face, and you just see the scene of the beautiful scenery out there and the mountains. And, the and you feel like you're in a movie. You feel like, yeah. That, that, uh, lo-fi is a different vibe. Man. Yeah. Like, and I, I really, it, it's, it's therapeutic music. It, I love that super healing. popular YouTube channel where it's like the girl that's like endlessly studying yeah. with the headphones on. <laughs> 10 the hours. 10 yeah. hours of study. It just keeps going and going and going. I don't know what she she's she's dedicated. That, that test is serious. <laughs> she's trying to figure out American politics. Right. You know? Oh yeah, that yeah, that's it's definitely that's ten hours. Complicated, 10 hours. bro. Yeah, that's ten Do hours. Do you have any words of wisdom you might want to share to those young kids out there or anyone thinking of starting in music or hip hop? Love the process. And don't play the compare and contrast game. I know the world is trying to make you think that way. Don't compare and contrast. Just stick with it. Stick with it. And whatever you got to say, say it. What's actually going to make you separate yourself from everybody else is actually your authentic experience that you go through. And, you know, it's there for you. It's there for everybody to really bring out whatever that's inside your spirit. I do feel like art in general is uh, is there for us humans to really express the beauty in our pain and our hurt and our love and our joy and our happiness or in between that is there for us to express and make a mark it bookmarks a timestamp of where you're at it's just as valuable as photos 
You know, when you look back at photos and when you say, wow, that was a time, wasn't it? It's the same shit. Cater to that. You'll get better as you go. Don't be like me when I, when I was starting out. When I was stressing out, I was like, man, that's not good enough. That's not good enough. Just do it. Don't be hypercritical of yourself. Just let the process go. You'll get where you want to go. You just got to trust in it. Just trust the process, man. As artists, we feel alone. We feel like we're very isolated from the rest of society. But ironically, the more you kind of tap into that place, the more connected you are. Because a lot of people is like, yeah, I know how that feels. You know what I'm saying? I know I know how that feels when like you're talking about this like this breakup. I know how it is when you tell me like you're broke. I know how it is when you when you're actually like in a high moment. That connects us, you know what I'm saying? So don't don't be ashamed of fully being authentic with your craft. Beautifully said and you I think you really drove home the point too of not just creative expression, the importance of that, but also the importance of naturally finding other people through that sense of community right. of working on what you both love together. Right. Thank you for those great words. Once again, we've been chatting with Cap Sizza, a hip hop artist and wordsmith from right here in Allentown, Pennsylvania. You can catch Cap on a wide range of projects with other artists as a regular on Grind Mode Cypher, and he'll also be releasing his new full-length album titled Griffin on April 26th, which is an independent release. To get a taste of what he does, check him out on your favorite streaming platform. It's Cap Sizza, C-A-P-C-I-Z-Z-A, and look out for that new single, Big Bang Theory, dropping right before the record. Cap, amazing chat, brother. Oh, man. Thank you for having me, man. Thank you for being here and for telling your story and for letting us know what you've been up to and what you have coming up, man. And I really hope that people, when this record drops, they love it and they can't wait for that physical copy too, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. I'm, I'm excited, man. I'm excited, man. It's been a, a hills and valleys, I'm not going to lie, but... When this record comes out, it's, it's going to be such a big relief. It's going to be beautiful. I it's, can't wait to check it out, brother. No, oh man. Thank you so much, man. And thank, thank you, you so for much. taking the time to do this, man. And if you're enjoying the Art Bazaar podcast, please help us grow by liking and subscribing to the podcast. We want to reach a worldwide audience to help bring attention to all of the amazing creators and unique folks we bring on. They certainly deserve it. And that's all for now. Thanks for listening, everyone. We'll see you next time on Art Bazaar. <laughs>